Welcome, welcome, welcome again. Good night, everyone out there in social media land. Welcome to another event of our Learn, Grow, Invest Club meeting. Uh, tonight, we have another exciting topic, as we always do for you, for you all. We'll be talking tonight about the pension pension scene and, and having and what it is to have a pension. The topic tonight is understanding pensions and making it work truly for you. We know that many persons have asked about, about pensions, how they, how they participate in them, get them, etc. Um, so we wanted to, we wanted to have this, bring the information to you tonight to give you some more clarity. So as we normally do, um, and as is customary, we're going to open tonight with with prayer and then I will do the introduction of my esteemed guest tonight who will be doing the presentation on, on understanding pensions. So we'll start with prayer as we always as, as we always do. So here we go. Father God, thank you again for bringing us all safely together to have this discussion and to impart knowledge that is being sought by those who are listening and looking. As we commit this meeting to your hands, we ask that the discussion be fruitful and the knowledge be easily transferred to everyone. And we ask for your guidance and your protection above, above over ourselves and everyone else that is tuning in tonight. In these, all these things we ask in your precious name, amen. All right, so tonight I am honored to have Miss Roxanne Wizard, who is going to be presenting to us on understanding pensions. Now, Roxanne comes to us with over 10 years of experience in the financial industry. She currently is full-time in the role of assistant manager at pension of pension administration and she is also a personal financial blogger um and her focus in terms of in terms of her blog is making every dollar count to optimize what your money can do so that you can enjoy life now but still build wealth to have that generational impact right so without further ado and also i'm sorry apologies but as as we always do customary for the housekeeping um we ask that you like share this video so that it can get out to others or on our different pages we have you can find us on social media on twitter at learn grow invest on Instagram and on Facebook. And also you can find Roxanne's blog at my AC, ACC dollar. And she's both on Twitter and I definitely know she's on Instagram as well. So without further ado, let us introduce the guest of the night uh, for the discussion, Miss Roxanne Wizard. Thanks, GK. Good, Good night, everyone. I hope you're all doing well and in and ready to hear about pensions. So as the topic said, we are just trying to break things down for you to understand it better. Um, I know it's something that you will probably uh, have heard about, but you don't really understand it. You don't know how it works. You might have heard persons say, oh, pensions don't make sense because when you're old, they don't get enough money and things like that. So right now, tonight, we're just going to break down a few of those things. Uh, so the outline tonight is I'll be going through what is a pension plan, uh, pension plan governance, benefits of a pension plan. I'll show you a few calculations and I'll also be giving you some tips. All right, so a pension. what is a pension? A pension is essentially and, um, income that you receive when you stop working. So if you, that can, that can be at any age, not just 65, it can actually be earlier. So it's whenever you choose so that you can, um, a pension will provide you that income whenever you choose to stop working. Now a pension plan 
is the arrangement that creates the opportunity for you to get that income when you choose to retire. So tonight's focus will be on private, the private pensions industry in Jamaica. So there's also, there's public, but uh, we'll be focusing on private because I believe that's, what this, that's the area that most of us would, would fall into and that's what we're most interested in. So in the private pension industry, we have two types of pension plans one of which is the approved retirement scheme and these are typically provided by a life insurance company or invest or an investment management company now persons who this would be suited for are those who are self-employed it will be suited for persons who are on contract or if you are just not in a pensionable post it is ideal for you to enroll in an approved retirement scheme the other type of plan is a superannuation fund. Now, this is one that is typically provided by an employer. So uh, by an employer to their full-time employees. So it's typically uh, an additional benefit. So it's, it, it'd be form, it would form part of your compensation package. So you know, sometimes when you, or not sometimes, when you apply for a job, when you get that job, you should have a benefit schedule that outlines all the things you'll get once you are confirmed in your role and a pension is typically one of those one of those benefits now the type of plan that the that the company may offer you can be a defined contribution or a defined benefit now what the name the name suggests exactly what it is so for a defined contribution plan it's based the amount you contribute the amount you you pay every month or or the frequency in which you pay is determined whereas a defined benefit it's the benefit that you get at retirement is certain and then based on that benefit it will determine how much you contribute now currently in jamaica i don't to the best of my knowledge there is no defined benefit plan that is accepting new members so for the most part even if you are going to be enrolled in an in a pension plan at your company it's going to be a defined contribution plan now the pension plan in the private pension plan plans in jamaica are governed by the fsc they are the approved regulators so they handle the affairs they monitor the companies they request certain reports and so on on a regular basis for the different pension plans it's also required to be approved by TAJ, that's Tax Administration Jamaica. Now, each pension plan, whether approved retirement scheme or a superannuation fund, are required to have trustees. Now, these are the persons who are responsible for the day-to-day, -day, sorry, let me not say day-to-day, -day, they are the ones responsible for the overall functionality of the plan. They may assign and a pension administrator to actually do the day-to-day -day stuff. But at the end of the day, the trustees are ultimately responsible for how the fund operates. Now, there are two types of trustees typically, and that is you have the trustees that are designated for you, the member. So if you're part of a pension plan, you have a, pen, a member trustee. So that is the trustee that you can go to and talk to about your pension plan. If you have any concerns, you can talk to that trustee. If you, you know, they're, they're the person that you can get some advice from and check in. Any, any concern that you have, you can, you can, you should be able to talk to that trustee. There should be someone you can relate to and you trust. Now, the pension plan, or whoever sets it up, whether it is an approved retirement scheme or a superannuation fund, whoever sets it up is considered the sponsor of the plan and that sponsor also has trustees that looks out on um, for their benefit as well so you'd also have sponsor trustees and another type of trustee depending on the membership you may have a deferred pension or trustee i won't focus on that one too much um because i not for tonight at least i'll maybe later on i'll touch on to what a deferred pension or trustee is now, each plan should have a trust deed and rules, and the trust deed and rules needs to be approved by the FSC and the TAG. Now, each, there are some basic things that are common for all plans, but then there are some things that are unique, and the unique features will be outlined in the trust deed and rules. Now, 
every plan has one, as, as I've mentioned, and it is important that you know it, <laughs> that you read it. If you're already part of a plan, get familiar with it. Now, the member's handbook is also something that should be available for each pension plan, and it breaks down the trust deed and rules into simpler language. Uh, the trust deed and rules may have some legal terminologies that you may not so easily understand, so the member's handbook should, would supplement that so that you can understand it better. And lastly, while it's not really a governance regulated thing, <laughs> I, I consider statements to be part of that governance. So you are required as an active member of any plan to an annual pension statement. So you are to, that is to just show you how your plan has done for the past year. It typically shows you projections of what you may get at retirement and so on, your, your replacement ratio. Uh, I know I may say a term there, so let me explain replacement ratio. So it shows you the amount currently based on your contributions currently, it would show you the percentage of your current income that your pension would replace at the rate that it is um, in the past year. Your statement should also outline your biographic information and any beneficiaries that you may have. Now, it is important that you review these things to ensure that the administrator has your correct information, so in terms of date of birth, TRN, address, phone number, and your beneficiary's names and date of birth are correct as well. If you have not assigned a beneficiary, I encourage you to do so now if you're part of a pension plan. All right, so what are some of the benefits? Now, the one you may have heard about, or if you've never heard it or about it, this is the one that persons will talk about the most, is that your contributions are tax deferred. Now, what that simply means now for us in Jamaica is that when you contribute to a pension plan, it is taken out of your salary or your income before any other tax is taken. So before income tax, before NHT, before education tax, all of that. Excuse me. So that allows you to maximize the amount you can contribute towards your pension. I really think this is a great benefit that the government has instituted for us because you can contribute up to 20% of your gross income towards your pension. And of course, that is the encouragement for you to contribute 20%. If you can't, at least, try, at least aim to get there. Now, of course, as I mentioned at the start, another benefit is that it gives you an income or provides you with an income when you retire. Now, we know life is uncertain. We don't know how long we live. But I do know, for the most part, we all want to live a long life. And so de depending on how long that might be, you can never have enough money, I would say. Because, you know, <laughs> as, you older, as you get older, you know, you might have, you might be more sickly, you might have more medical expenses. That may be the time you want to go on a vacation. That may be the time you just want to do things that you never got the chance to do while you're working. So having this income can really help you. And especially if, for example, you want to leave something for maybe kids or grandkids or great grandkids as i say you don't know how long you will live now another benefit is if you are an if you are employed and your employer contributes this is an additional part of your compensation so most persons might look at their salary so yeah you might be getting paid for example two million but if your company contributes towards your pension for you that's an additional five to 10% that they're also paying you essentially. That's a benefit to you. So it's encouraged, I'm encouraging you if you are employed to a company that offers a pension plan, that you maximize that benefit. I know some companies, so typically the, the minimum is 5% for the employer, 5% for the employee. But some companies may offer to pay an additional 5% if you also do an additional 5%. Because as I had mentioned, the maximum is 20. But if you don't do that 5%, they are not going to do it. So as best as possible, if they provide that benefit, of course, opt for that. Now, an additional benefit is that when you invest your money in an approved retirement, um, or an approved retirement scheme or pension plan, any investment income that the fund earns is tax-free. So some persons will say they don't like a pension plan because they want to 
um, be in control of what is invested in or they want to they want to get they want the income for themselves or whatever the reason might be but if you buy a share in a company and it pays dividends you are subject to that 15 percent tax right now if the pension plan invests in that same stock and the dividend is paid no taxes that 15 percent is not taken so you're maximizing benefits overall so it, it's not taxed when you contribute and it's not taxed when it earns so that's a great benefit as well now i've highlighted the death benefit and termination benefit here but i'll take those later on in the presentation by the way uh if you guys have any questions please share them in the chat <laughs> and i'll get to them after all right so I was referring to some benefits now. So I'm giving an example for someone who is below the current current threshold of 1.5 million. Because I know so I know as the government, I think the figures last year were saying only about 300,000 of those employed actually pay income tax. So a vast majority of our employed population in Jamaica is below the 1.5 threshold. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so you may not think it's that great a benefit if you contribute to a to the pension plan but i'm still going to show you that even if it's a dollar which as i like to say make every dollar count it does make a difference for you just the same so using a, a salary of 1.2 million for the year that's a hundred thousand for the month now i hope you're all be able to see it clearly but in the first column it shows if you're not contributing and in the second column it shows you if you're contributing typically what is the minimum of five percent so in the first column it shows that the education tax if you do not contribute is two thousand one hundred and eighty two dollars fifty cents now it may not seem like much but if you do at least five percent contribution you will save a hundred and twelve dollars fifty cents in those taxes now as i'm showing you this example is on five percent but imagine if it was ten percent fifteen percent twenty percent it does add up no, this is you. For one, I know persons like to say they don't want government to take the money because they not use it properly and they waste it and all of that. So if you can pay the government less, I would say take that, get that advantage while you are saving for yourself for retirement. And on the right hand side, that shows where it adds up for the year. So as I mentioned, this is just at five percent. So for the year, is yes, it's just one thousand three hundred and fifty. But think about how many shares of Wickton you could have bought with $1,350 or how many shares of another stock. So that is also another benefit to you of what you can do with your money. So as I mentioned, every dollar does count. So it, if you contribute, it, it changes the statutory income. And your statutory income, as this highlights, is your gross income minus pension contributions and those contributions also include nis now this here is now showing an example if you're over the th threshold as simple amount 2.4 million for the year that's 200,000 monthly now this is where persons will see a greater difference yes, if you're paying income tax um so the ex example is similar in terms of the percentages so You'll see I 5% of the 200,000 is 10,000 per month. So that's what you contribute. I highlight the difference again in the education tax that you would pay. But I've also highlighted the difference now in income tax. If you do not contribute to a pension plan and you're currently paying income tax at this salary rate, you would be paying $17,810 in income tax. Now, I know a lot of persons have a problem with it being 25% at all. So for me, again, if you can save any money, contribute to a pension plan. If you contribute the minimum 5%, as the example shows on the right, that's $2,725 less that you'd be paying for income tax. And that adds up for the year, as you see. This is just at 5%. Now, imagine if you're getting paid more than this, how much more you'd be saving in terms of tax. And as you see, the benefits adds up in terms of your pension savings, because for the year, just at just 5%, you can save 120,000. Now imagine that accumulating over 10, 20, 30 years. All right, so let's get into the part that usually gets 
where persons may have the most questions. So yes, you contribute, but at the end of the day, what am I getting? Now, as I had mentioned, each plan has their own rules. So the retirement age will differ based on a plan. Some has the retirement age at 60, some has it at 65, some have a different age for females, some have a different age for males, but it all depends. So you'd have to know what specifically what your plan considers the normal retirement age. So I'm just going to be speaking mostly general about these. So whatever your company, sorry, whatever the pension plan determines as its normal retirement age, it just simply means exactly what I just said, you know, normal retirement. So this is when most persons, when the members are expected to retire. So as I said, I could be 60 or 65. And for the benefit of keeping it simple, we'll just use 65 because that's now the national, consider the national average age for retirement. All right, so early retirement now is typically 10 years before whatever that normal retirement date is or age. So if the normal retirement age for the plan is 65, then early retirement can be as early as age 55. So anywhere between age 55 to 64, you can still retire and that would be considered early retirement. Now, I know that's the option most persons would want, but later on in presentation, I'll show you where that may not always be ideal. Uh, next is late retirement. Typically, not typically, late retirement is five years after the normal retirement age. So again, if it is 65, you can go on late retirement anywhere from age 66 to age 70. You are not expected to remain a member in the pension plan past the late retirement age. Now, this is one that I know is not very familiar with a lot of persons is ill health retirement. Now, this is one where if you are unable to continue working due to a medical condition, you can actually claim your retirement benefit upon that um, diagnosis from a medical doctor. Once you can provide the necessary documentation and proof, a benefit can be paid out to you. Now, again, this is someone, this is one thing that, as I say, it's, you never know what can happen. So if this potentially may be part of your future, this would be a good additional benefit to have along with your other investments and insurance. So after you retire now, whichever one of them you choose at a normal, early, late, these are the typical options you may have. There are more, but these are the general ones that are, that are available. Now, as the first one says, zero-year guarantee. What this simply means is that your retirement benefit is for your life only. So... If you retire at age 65 and you only live for one more year, so you die at age 66, that is the end of your pension, right? Now, this is not the option that people tend to use because even though at that age you might say, okay, my kids are all grown, I don't really need to, you know, I don't really have any dependents, you generally don't want it to be that, oh, you only live one year after years of saving all this money. And it's only one year that you might live for and then all the money is gone. But of course, this is typically the one that pays the most. Um, next is a five-year guarantee, which as it suggests, whatever payment, whatever the payment is, it is guaranteed for 60 months. So 60 months. So using the same example, if you retire at 65, you only live one year, your beneficiary is still entitled to those additional four years of payment. And similarly, for the 10 year, 120 months of payment is guaranteed. So as you see, as you go down, these payments typically get lower. I'll show an example later on um, to show you what those figures may look like. Now, 50% joint life and survivorship. Now, what this means, this is typically for persons who are married. So say, for example, now you are retiring and your pension will be 100000 But that is for you and your spouse. No, you want it to be a case where if you should die before your spouse, your spouse still gets a benefit. But since it's now only going to be one, they may only need 50% and not the full 100% that you were getting. So if your pension was 100000 they'll now be getting 50000 
for the remainder of their life. 100% joint life and survivor, of course, now, as it, as it mentioned. So if you get 100,000 now and you die, your spouse will get 100% for the remainder of their life. Now, the, there is the last one that is a full commutation. Now, what that typically is, is that, so in Jamaica, there is, based on the Income Tax Act, there is also a, a law, or well, as the act states, if you should be if you should get an annuity based on the value of your account and the payment ends up being less than half of minimum wage then you can opt for a full commutation what that simply means is you'll just get one lump sum payment so instead of getting monthly payments for the remainder of your life you'll just get one lump sum payment upon retirement now of course this may not be a great benefit because of course it's just a one-time payment and that's it but these are typically for persons who have not contributed enough in their pension plan or they started very late, which is why the encouragement is to always start as early. Start tomorrow. It's now after business hours, so start tomorrow. If you're not already part of a plan or if you are part of a plan, make ensure that you're contributing the maximum that you're able to. Now, I had mentioned earlier, there are two types of superannuation funds. They define the benefit and the defined contribution. Now for the defined benefit, the same options are available in terms of the annuity, but the benefit is typically determined by a formula. And this formula typically consists of these three factors noted on the screen. It's pensionable salary, pensionable service, and then accrual rate. The accrual rate is anywhere from it goes up to 2%, as I said, it could be 0.5, it could be 1, it could be 1.5, it could be 2. But that is determined, again, based on your trustee. And so if you are currently part of a defined benefit plan, ensure to look up what your um, benefit, what your, what your calculation, what your formula is for your benefit that is to be paid to you. So that's typically it, pensionable salary times pensionable service times accrual rate. Now, of course, the longer you work for that company and are part of the plan, the higher benefit is expected to be. All right, so now let's look at some calculations. So I've, I've given the scenario of a 30-year-old person. I think this is a good band based on what I know our audience to be. I know some persons may be younger or older, but I think 30 is a good place to start. And based on the example I showed earlier, if you're contributing 10,000 monthly, now this could be if you're paying 10% at 100,000 or you're paying the 5% if you're getting 200,000 monthly, whichever the case. So 10,000 monthly, which I think is a fair minimum. And again, using the example of your normal retirement age being 65. So if you start at age 30, you'd be contributing for 35 years and you, your total contributions would be 4.2 million. And now we're going to estimate an average return of 11% per year. Now we know in the case of like last year where we have a pandemic, it may not be 11%, but there are some years where I know some plans is doing 24, 30, 40%. So it can happen where the average, so the idea is that a pension is long term. So you're contributing for 35 years. Yes, every year may not be a good, may not be a good year, but where they might be shortfalls, good years will compensate for that. So 11% per annum is the, I think is a good average return because also remember the investment income is not being taxed. So that, as I said, I think that's a good return. So if you contribute this 10,000 consistently for 35 years, average return of 11%, your expected account balance at A65 should be 146 million. Now, we also have the option currently upon retirement for you to claim a tax-free lump sum from your pension account balance. So using this example of the 146 million, if you opt for that lump sum, you can get 36,000, sorry, 36 million um, as a lump sum payment when you retire. 
Now, as, I, as you may also be seeing, depending on if you take a lump sum or not, that will, of course, affect the monthly amount, a monthly income that you will now get. Now, the figures I'm showing below are the monthly figures of what is expected to be. <clears throat> so this is, of course, taking into consideration inflation. So if you are if you are currently if you are currently earning a hundred thousand now, we're expecting that thirty five years from now, obviously you should not a hundred thousand won't be able to buy the same thing because of inflation. But eight hundred and twenty five thousand may be able to do the same the very same things that a hundred thousand could do now, or probably even more, depending on what the standard of living is. Now, as I had mentioned earlier, depending on the benefit that is chosen. So, if you take the lump sum in this in this scenario and you take the zero year guarantee, the maximum you would get at this point is 825,000 for your pension. But say, for example, you choose a 10 year guarantee, it, you see it reduces to maybe 792,000. If you choose 100% joint life and survivorship, 769,000. So as I, as I had mentioned, it depends on which option you select and also if you take a lump sum or not. Because on the left, in the middle, if you see, if you don't take the lump sum, you're getting over a million dollars for each option. So it just depends. Uh, persons are living longer, but again, you don't know how long you're going to live, but persons are living longer. So depending on how, on your health and, and various other factors, if you have dependents and so on, you may, you may not want to take a lump sum or you make it lump sum, it just depends. So at that point is when you make decision. It's not like you have to make it today when you're signing up for the plan. You can make that choice when you are retiring. Now, as I had mentioned, you can go on early retirement and I, as I said, it may not always be to your benefit. So using the same scenario, you're contributing the same amount, but now say you want to retire the 10 years earlier at age 55. You would only be contributing over 25 years. So the amount you pay is 3 million. But of course, because you're 10 you're going 10 years earlier, your account balance is only 37 million. Not too bad now if you're thinking real terms now, but of course you're now looking at 25 years in the future. 25 years, 37 million dollars may not be anything. Uh, but it's still but it's just to give you an idea that whether or not you choose to, you can have this income to supplement it. So yes, you and it's not to say that you can't or you shouldn't. It's just consider what this may mean for you. Because I, as I said, I know this is the option that most persons want. They want to stop working early so they can live life and you know take your vacation and all of that. But the 10 years less compounding makes a big difference. On the other hand, if you opt for late retirement, we see where that 146 million grows to 280 million, which maximize your earnings. Now, I know some persons might say, okay, retiring at 70, why? I don't know, I might only live 10 more years, but that could be some very good 10 years. I'm sure we know a lot of 70 year olds that are still fit and strong and living life just like you and me. So it just depends again, as I said, on your lifestyle and what you envision it to be when you get to that stage. Uh, I'm just going to share, keep it up a little for you to see the, the, the differences, as I had mentioned. So this is five years later than the normal retirement age. We see where the lump sum jumps to 70 million and you're getting over 1.6 million if you take that lump sum and then over 2 million for all if you do not take the lump sum. Now, granted, I'm not saying these figures are set in stone. This is just an example because each annuity provider, which I, I didn't mention yet, so these pension benefits that I've, I'm, I've referred to in terms of zero-year guarantee, 10-year guarantee, and so on, these are provided by an annuity provider. Currently in Jamaica, we have two. I mean, technically it's three, but really two, because, <laughs> you know, NCB and Guardian merged. So it was Sagicor, NCB, and Guardian. But since Guardian and NCB merged, it's really just one. So we have two annuity providers currently. So typically when you are ready to retire now, depending on your account balance, you know, the quotes would be requested from the, from, the, from the providers and then you will see what the options that they're, they're providing. So you, you should be given an option from both companies for you to see what it entails. And you can ask your questions, you can speak to the administrator, you can speak to your HR, 
you can speak to the trustees as I mentioned. So anybody, you can ask the questions more at that time. But I also believe that each plan typically has retirement seminars closer to when you should retire. So they may they typically have one every year, but it's really geared towards persons near retirement age. So it may not interest you now if you're 30 in the example, but when you're maybe at 50 you now, you may start going to those seminars to hear what to expect and, and how the process goes. So this is what it is currently. All right, so the other two ben benefits that I had mentioned that I said I'd, I'd get back to was death and termination such as re resignation. Now, some persons say, okay, why am I contributing for this? And I don't know if I might live to see retirement. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to live. But do you have persons depending on you? Or even if you don't, would you want to leave or something for anybody? So currently, if you are contributing to a plan, it doesn't go down the drain should you die. As I had mentioned before, you can assign beneficiaries. So if you have children, if, or if you have a spouse, or you have elderly parents, that you know anything can happen at any point in time. You, even though you have elderly parents, you could still die before them. And not to sound morbid, but that's just the reality. So you can assign beneficiaries, and should you die before you are able to claim a retirement benefit, the, those proceeds can be paid out to your beneficiary. All right now, if a beneficiary is not assigned, that creates issues, and we know how the legal system is. So I encourage you again, appoint beneficiaries. And if you have children, I would also say be careful who you appoint as the trustee for those children. All right. Now, in terms of termination slash resignation, um, now we know you may not work for the same company for 10, 20, 30 years anymore. Those days are, are long gone. Um, so upon leaving, now whether you are terminated where the company says no, you are you know, making you redundant and so on, or you choose to leave, you can still have a benefit from it. Now, I, I say this lightly, because even though I say it's a benefit, it's a benefit that I, I recommend persons don't usually take, because again, you never know what can happen. Um, so upon termination, you typically, as I said, most plans have their own rules, but typically, from a super animation fund that is the one that is provided by your employer you can typically get a refund of your own contributions that you have made now i know where this has helped persons because in the case that it's it's you are made redundant you know it may be a while before you get another job so it can supplement short term well but it's not recommended because at the end of the day it was supposed to be for retirement and again you don't know how long you may live so this is why persons will this is why it's always encouraged for you to have additional um, savings, so your emergency fund and so on. So if you should lose your job, you have your emergency fund to rely on and not necessarily your retirement benefits. Now, another, th another thing, and so vested and non-vested in these terms. So typically for the approved retirement scheme, vesting is immediate. So once you open the plan and contribute, all the contributions are locked in. It can't be taken away. That is it. When it's a superannuation fund now through your employer, there may be a certain duration that you need to be employed for or be a part of the plan for in order to get the employer's benefit. Sorry, the employer's contribution. So this vary again based on plan. Um, some have vesting of three years, some have vesting of, of one year, starts as early as one year, where there's a percentage that you might get after one year, and that percentage in, percentage increases as the years go by until it gets to 100%. Um, you have some that is 10 years, you have, I think, I've heard there's one of 15 years. So, you know, it all depends. You also have some plans where if you take a refund, you basically forfeit the employer's contribution so be very if you are resigning from a company or you have been laid off or for whatever reason you know terminated be, ensure to read your option forms carefully because some persons give up millions just because they want cash in their hand it to me that makes no sense the company was paying this contribution for you it's part of your compensation package why give it up just to get your 
maybe two or three million in hand, you may give up 15 million because it, it with the superannuation fund, sometimes when they when an actuarial valuation is done, they might declare bonuses. And when a bonus is declared, sometimes, and sometimes it may go to the employer's side and not necessarily your side because they don't want you to get that cash. At the end of the day, the idea of the pension plan is trying to stay true to what it is. It's for your retirement. It's not for your immediate benefit right now. So it, 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 any benefit or, or, or surplus that it declares, it wants it to retain, <laughs> remain in the plan so that you can have it. They are trying to save you from yourself, essentially. So I don't think it's all bad. So just be careful depending on the situation. I know it may be difficult for some persons at times. So you're saying, oh, I lose the job and I don't know what I'm going to do, so I need the money. I would say wait or, again, plan from now should that happen in the future. All right, so that is it for the most part. Um, I know I'll take your questions after, but I'll just leave you with some tips, as I've been saying throughout the presentation, to start as early as you can. Now, I know if we might have young persons listening, you're saying, oh, you're 18, you have time, or your 20 is your first job, you know, you want to live a little and you want to build before you start to contribute. But I would say still, still start. 5%, start at the minimum. I know some plans actually may not require 5%. Um, so whatever the min minimum is, um, you can contribute, contribute. Start with that and be consistent with it. Um, for the retirement schemes, it's not necessarily that you have to contribute monthly. If you contribute once per year, that is also um, that's an also available option to you. But it's best you start now. And again, maximize your contribution rates. So I'd mentioned the maximum you can currently contribute is 20% tax-free. So if you are part of an approved retirement scheme, so you're is not your employer, you not don't have an employer assisting you, you can do up to that 20% yourself. No, I have, I have actually been in those scenarios where I'm not in a pensionable post or in between, you know, until I'm confirmed in a row. So I contribute a 20% in that in those windows so that I can maximize. Now, for I think it's actually probably better for an approved retirement scheme because you can, if you earn a dollar or a million, it's 20% of that dollar or million. For some of the superannuation plans, they define what your pensionable salary is. So your pensionable salary may be just your basic salary. So say, you know, some companies might say, okay, your salary is 2 million, but you have a lunch subsidy, you have a car allowance, you have a uniform allowance, whatever the case may be. That still, form, that still forms part of your compensation, but you may not necessarily be able to contribute on that. However, if you're part of an approved retirement scheme, you would be able to contribute on that because that is actually income that you have earned. So there's still there's some pros and cons, but at the end of the day, it's to maximize what whatever your situation is. Um, as I mentioned before, you save for emergencies separately. You know, we know some persons say, you know, one month, three to six months, twelve months, whatever you find may work for you. It's encouraged that you save you create our and build that emergency fund separate from your pension savings do not rely on it to say okay if i leave the company i can get this money i can use this to do xyz because most often than not you may not use it for what you say you intended to use or if you do invest it immediately maybe two three years down the line you may say oh i have this money to it grow it might, you know you invest it in some stocks and they the prices have gone up oh i can withdraw it now to do x y and z but no, as best as possible, leave it in the fund to have it accumulate for its intended purpose. Um, now, I've been making reference to stocks as well. It's also encouraged that you still have other investments. So yes, you want to have some, some what you say now? Um, you want some control, so some control in, in some way. So, you know, outside of your pension, um, contributions you could if you have additional um disposable income you can be you can be investing in whether in either stocks or even a, a mutual fund unit trust anything like that it's recommend that you have some other source of investment as well to supplement this 
And the last thing I would say is to review your annual statements. Review it carefully. And again, I mentioned each statement should show you a projection. So based on your current rate of contribution, it should project you know, what you may get at retirement. And of course, it typically is projecting at your normal retirement age. Um, I would say, you know, persons think, say, you know, they're not, they don't want to do it or it don't make sense or it's too much, whatever your reason might be. But just last year, the government increased our NIS without us having a choice. So why not make the choice yourself and just maximize what you can contribute to your pension plan? So that is what I will leave you guys with. Just maximize it. You never know what the future holds. Uh, thanks, Roxanne. That that was that was a lot to take in, but um, all educational. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually, truth be told, I am very much guilty of of a lot of things you just said because before we came, before we got to this topic. I did some homework and I went and I looked on how much I put into my pension. And sadly, I am not maximizing. Well, firstly, I'm not maximizing my pension. That's the first thing. Secondly, it's the bare minimum I see because when I calculated it back, it is the 5%. So, mm -hmm. I, and I haven't even looked on what the what my employer is contributing etc because the truth is just that and i've got i've got some questions outside along with the questions that are coming in i was never of the of the of the full belief that um based on inflation and stuff that those those factors there that just putting this amount in the in a pension would actually help me long term mm. So this has been a real, a very real eye opener. So uh, we'll take, we'll take, we'll take um, the audience's questions and 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 jump between it. So we have Kashif's question, uh, Kafash's question, or Kifash's question <laughs> is: What if my employer country? And I hope I did that right. I'm so sorry. Um, what if my con my employer contributes, but I leave the company before I'm vested? Will they take back the money that they contributed over the period? um i mean we did answer you did answer it but for, for, for him and yes for I'll, I'll just i'll add to that a little more since he asked um yes they will take it back um but i would also say if it's if it's a case where you're the one that is choosing to leave your employer before before you're vested factor that into your your salary negotiations at the new company so say for example you know you may have saved 500,000, for example, so far. Okay, how can I get that 500,000 back <laughs> within maybe a year or two? Maybe ask for an increase in your salary, negotiate your salary to, to increase that amount, and then you save that extra that you wanted in the first place. They may be able to, to, up, to, to up your off, to, um, to up the salary that they were offering. So you could negotiate it that way, or if you know you have a waiting period. So for example, when I left, my previous post i was fully vested and now i have i'm going on probation <laughs> so there was that window where i wouldn't the employer wouldn't be contributing for me so I, I i negotiated the salary to say okay since i won't have the employer contributing for me let me request the salary so if i am putting the 20 percent, i basically add back what my previous employer was was paying so you know it's something to think about it's not just that you you know you're giving up the money just just like that, you could still get it back <laughs> based on your negotiations with the new company. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, let me see if, if we catch that here. We go. Yes, this is the one I wanted. So Ram Ramon is asking if we if um he can start a pension plan. But we did say that you did say that at the start, pension plan separate from the one that is done by his employer. And he asked if yes, the organizations that you would recommend um approaching. If you can give that recommendation, that is. All right. So there's a condition to that. You cannot be an act, you cannot be actively contributing to more than one pension plan currently. You're actually not able to. So right now it's it's part of the pension reform. They're looking to adjust that because we do know that 
Yes, while they are, there are investment managers, and as I, as I mentioned, the trustees that you can liaise with and give your, you know, state your concerns and recommendations, they may not always invest in a way that is suited for you. And if, for example, you're seeing overall the market is, is up, and not just stocks. So when I say market is up, not just focusing on now the stock market, but say overall, you know, GDP is growing, economy is growing, and so on, but your pension plan is doing less than inflation, for example, consistently right. over a period of time, you may, you may want to say, okay, let me contribute less. You know, I'll do the 10% and then I can do another 10% in another plan. So that is the aim of what, they're, what the FSC is trying to get us to, but currently we're not there yet. So right now, if you are already par a part of a plan and contributing, no, you're not able to do another one. But if you are with a company, but they do not provide pension as part of your compensation, then yes, you can sign up for one at another, um, at, at a life insurance or investment company, as I mentioned. There are currently 13 approved retirement schemes in Jamaica. So if you think of the major financial institutions, they typically have a retirement plan. So, yeah. Okay. I, I want to ask on that. Um you're not able to contribute you're not able to contribute to multiple pension plans in jamaica mm -hmm. but is there any problem of if you were to get into another pension plan well it would it would not be officially a pension plan itself um in the in the terms of a company etc but one provided by another financial institution outside that's that that should be okay um is that you possible? mean like outside of jamaica yes well, I mean, the, the, the rules for those will, will be different. Um, so there are always requirements to enroll in a plan. So if, if, if you are, no, you'll be doing this on your, on your own, on it your really net. On no, your own. no. So let me, let me just say, if it's on your net, if it is on your net, then that's, I mean, then that's fine. <laughs> it's okay. just that, okay. it's just that in Jamaica, the idea is that it's, it's for your benefit to do it before the taxes. So if you want to be, if you want to invest after your taxes, there is no problem with that. I don't I don't see an issue with that. I don't I'm not aware of any issue with investing with your after tax <laughs> benefits. Um, so yeah, once the once the other plan is is you meet the requirements for their plan, then I suppose that would be okay. Okay, no problem. Right, so the next question from Daly is, is an 11% return realistic in Jamaica for the last 10 years? Yes, it is. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to ask that in this way. Is that, is that standardly always 11% as long as everything is going okay? Right? So minus what happened with the, what is happening with the pandemic normally? Is it a standard 11 and up or is it 11 and below? Percent. It, as I say, defer. It, it, it every plan defers, but um, it I've seen <laughs> consistently double digit return for 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 a pension plan. So prior to pandemic, prior to twenty twenty with the pandemic, yes, past mm -hmm. ten years, yes, double digit return. So it is possible. It yeah. is possible. Okay. There is one. So one question I have before we get to the other one. Um, in terms of marriage, and you made this you, well, your spouse, and you made that statement about your beneficiary or having a beneficiary. There's the the the, the question of when you get married. Once you put a beneficiary on it, this is I would like to know. After that, does the beneficiary that was on the original plan become null and void after marriage, or it still holds regardless of marriage? What what happens there? No, so it's there's no. As far as I know, <laughs> I don't know if there's any unique plan with that, but you can put anybody as your beneficiary. It does not have to be your spouse. So you could be married and it's still not your spouse. Right, okay. So, so it can, it can be put... anyone. But if you do not have a beneficiary and it goes through the legal process of, you know, um, is in test to see what that, that will when you know we go to administrator general state, and so yeah, on state. when it goes to the state yes it, it's going to follow what the law says so typically the law the first person if you're married is your spouse which is why i say ensure you have a beneficiary and as best as possible keep it up to date because 
say you did have your spouse at some point, but now you're divorced, you want to move your, remove your spouse, or you may, the per, your spouse may have died. You know, you, you, want to, you want to keep it up to date. Or if you had a parent and the parent has now died, you know, you keep it up to date, which is why I say, when you get your annual statement, you review it. Check, okay, who did I have as my beneficiary? Oh, mommy died. Let me change it now, kind of thing, you know? So keep, it's for you to, 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 to take the initiative and ensure that those things are up to date. Yeah, that's exactly what I was asking because prior, you know, you, would, you might have somebody who is not your spouse as your beneficiary. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, so our next question is from Kerry, um, who, who joined late, but she's asking, is, long, is the lump sum received at retirement taxable and is the monthly pension taxable? Actually, okay. that, that was a question I was going to ask as well too. After you know you reach retirement, what happens then? When does the tax must kick in at some point in time? So what happens? Yes, then? it does. All right. So no, the lump sum is not taxed. The twenty-five percent lump sum is not taxed. However, the monthly pension payments may be taxed, and I say may because the threshold still applies. So currently, the one point five still applies. And there is also an old age threshold. It's not much more, but of course, it will make a difference. I think it's currently 60,000 more above the, the 1.5. I think it's 60,000 monthly. I'm, I'm actually, I'm really not sure about it, but I do know there's an old age threshold. I think that's the term that they, they, they use for it. So if you should retire now and your annual benefit is less than the 1.5, then it wouldn't be taxed. So it's, it's subject to the same threshold. So whatever threshold will be in place at the time of your retirement would apply. Okay. So based on, so based on um, the three retirement points that you had, that you had illustrated 55, 65 and after 70. So let's take the 70, the 70 retirement age. If you had mm -hmm. opted for the lump sum payment, that's 70 million so and based on so the, so the monthly payment would be well you had more different monthly payments but it would yeah, be over so. one one million one million dollars basically whichever mm -hmm. one you took right so everything over that would have been would have been taxed that brings me to yeah, my so. question about the benefits of itself which mm -hmm. one are you aware of has been the optimal one that persons try to um, aspire to when they understand, when they finally understand this in terms of which one do they try to take? Do they take, do they take the, do they take the one prior to, prior to at 55 or do they, do they pick the one that is at, at, at 65? Or so 70? it, no, current, it typically depends if you are employed until retirement. <laughs> Mm. so let me tell you let me explain a bit more so say for example now you are you if you might be the odd person you might be the odd millennial now that will stay at your company 30 35 years so chances are you will be working if you're with the same company until retirement you're going to go at age 65 um right. because the the Early retirement is not automatic. Like you can, I don't know if, I don't recall if you can just up to say, yes, I want to retire. I think you also have to get permission. Um, actually, no, sorry. At early retirement, you can choose. It's late retirement that the employer has to, has to authorize as well. Um, so yes, okay. you can, you can, you can, you can opt to take the early retirement. But what I find is that most persons, if they're still working to that point, they find that they don't necessarily want to leave. They they stay till normal retirement or even later. Of course. Yeah, they, they, they usually tend to do that. The persons that typically opt for the early retirement is the case where, say you had the pension plan, you left the company, you are a deferred member. Oh, I didn't get back to the deferred trustee. You are a deferred member. So should you leave the company, should you leave a company and you are vested, or even if you left your own contributions in it. So you're now a deferred member. So what that simply means is that you're deferring your benefit. So you leave the money in there at retirement, you should have a, you can have a benefit to claim. So what I find is that the deferred members typically opt for the early retirement, because at that point it may not be much. It may not be enough to purchase an annuity to get that monthly income. It might just be a lump sum. So they may just take that lump sum to supplement them while they're still working in their other job or to supplement a, uh, 
another annuity that they they are currently getting from their current um, employer. Because I had mentioned, say for example, you your first job or your fir the first job where you had a, rich, um, a pension and the retirement age was 65. You're now at one that the retirement age is 60. Um, sorry, let me do that reverse. <laughs> the previous one was 60 and now you're at 65. Five. You, you can choose at 50 to claim from the one you had before. So, you know, some persons may take that early from that plan and say, okay, let me supplement this now. Let me take a big big a vacation or a big celebration for age 60, nice. you know, when you turn 60 and so on. So it, it just depends typically on your membership status. I find that those who are deferred tend to do early retirement. Okay. All right. Um, so our next question comes from Raj. Uh, is the amount you get as a lump sum a percentage of the balance? Yes, it's a fixed percentage of 25% currently. Okay, okay. And we have Delia. Delia is asking, where can I get a list of the 13 approved pension plans? On the FSC's website. Okay. Um, there was, well, there's one question that I had. Um, I, was, I was looking at, all right, so redundancy. If you're, if you're made redundant, Mm -hmm. I had I went through that one time. How easy is it to so you're supposed to get your payout as you said? Um if you if you were if you were vested, that is right. How easy is it to move that into can you move it over into your into your other into your new company or okay, would you have to do that individually? What yes, options are you available? can. Yes, you, you can. You should you should be able to. Um, but again, each plan has their own rules. <laughs> so right. for the most part, the receiving plan, so the new company or new or the retirement scheme sh would need to approve that transfer. So they have to say, yes, you can transfer the money. So yes, okay. you, you do have the option to, if you're a major donor or you just resign, you can transfer it to another plan. I know I, did, sorry, I did not mention that in the presentation, but that is one of the benefits of um, when you're when you're terminated from the plan, you can transfer to another plan. Um, it's not always recommended though, <laughs> because again, know the trustee and rules. So there are some plans, and I, as I mentioned, know the rules of each plan. So know the rules of the plan that you're leaving, and know the rules of the plan that you're going into. So every three years, as a part of the regulatory requirements, an actuarial valuation is required to be done on a, on a plan. No, we know as I said, situation varies. Some persons are made redundant or they just find a better job and they leave. So when they right. give up those employers' monies that they're not vested in, that creates a surplus into the into the pension fund, right? Now, some actors may declare that this excess money be paid to the existing active members in the plan. So, so, so I lose my money. <laughs> And it's, and it's just, and everybody <laughs> and else members, that's not fair. Yes, that's yes, not fair. yes. Um, but you have, you have some cases where the surplus is not applied to transferred monies. Hmm. So if you leave it in the plan, you might get surplus because it might, so if you say, you're, say you left plan A, plan A does evaluation and they declare bonus to be paid to active and deferred members. So you can still get surplus on the money even though you're not contributing, you left it there. But plan B now that you are no, you want to transfer to as a as a rule or a clause or whatever the case may be to say no, they don't put it, they don't apply surplus to transfer monies. So yes, you'll be earning the regular interest rate at whatever the plan earns overall, but in the event of a surplus, you may not benefit on a top up. So you also have to, to pay attention to what happens. Now, the valuation that I've mentioned, there's also an annual report that is required by FSC for each pension plan. There is also financial statements that you should be able to view. All of these should be available to you. Now, it may not be, it's not something that they're going to, going to necessarily send you, but it can be, it, you can request it and you should be able to be provided with it. So an uh, annual report typically has a, syn a, a synopsis of the financials for the year. So even if you don't get into the detail of it, they may not send you the entire financial in itself. You should at least see like the balance sheet and the PNL and so on 
for for the year and on and, and how it was done the valuation as well uh, you should be able to view it you should be able to i believe so yes you should be able to view it uh, i need to some, go check it because some have um you have access online to view your your pension accounts and they, so they might upload these documents on this on the site as well so just just that check is, if you have online is. access to see if it's there yeah yeah for those for those who those you had mentioned sajiko I, I believe guardian would have the same thing too but i know sajiko for sure does have um online viewing of your pension information and everything about it and, and so forth i need to check about about the financials though that that is for sure so yeah. our next question is from dk and can his question is, question is can my pension contributions be invested in usd devaluation has been the biggest destroyer of jamaican wealth over the last 20 years that was definitely going to be a question of mine at some point <laughs> in time too so yeah let's let's hear that one <laughs> well not that i'm aware of i will see <sighs> Um, I believe, though, if you are being paid in USD then I, and your company offers a plan, I don't suppose why it would not be invested in USD if you're paid in USD. But um, if you're paid in Jamaican and then you convert it to US and invest solely in US, no. So for the most part, now the monies are not just invested in any one thing or even in any one denomination. <laughs> so yeah. there is also something called the statement of investment policies and principles that guides the investment manager for for the pension fund so the trustees can make their recommendation so the investment manager will of, of course make their own recommendations as to based on the demographic of the of the of the membership and so on they might say or tactical approach to invest in usd for example or just foreign exchange overall is five to ten percent the trustees can choose to not follow that and make it be zero or they can choose to maximize and say okay let's bring it up to 10. now i say 10 <laughs> because it was recently approved by the boj that we can go up to 10 it was there was for a very long time a limit of five percent of the holdings for the pension fund they were trying to limit the the foreign currency exposure to that but it has been extended to 10 percent starting right. april april 2021 i believe yeah so no i don't i'm not aware of any outright usd pension but as i mentioned if you are being paid in usd and your company provides it that should be an option i i would think that just makes sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that's yeah that's we we, we very much trying to protect our money from sliding into we, we keep we keep losing it and with that this was the question i was waiting for from, from <laughs> that is exactly about that every year we keep you know we keep losing to, to inflation i mean they're trying to the government is now or the bank of jamaica is now trying to handle our inflation and keep it low, stable etc mm -hmm. so but i i i have this question wholeheartedly for for he's paying you're paying taxes at the end, in the end, will the tax bill, the tax rate be lower um, as a reward for his discipline? Although it's, if you're paying it, if you're not, if you're, if it's coming out mandatorily, you're not really, you don't have a choice. But um, if you're actually paying it yourself, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the way I look at it, is it I pay the tax now or I pay it later? We have to pay taxes. We, we can't get rid of it. But I would rather invest before taxes because it's a larger sum being invested now and have that compound over years than to have the tax be taken now and then have a lower amount being invested and, and accumulated because if you think about it five thousand let's keep it simple four thousand dollars being invested now as opposed to three thousand dollars over 30 years that's essentially what what you'd be giving up you're giving up a thousand dollar every month now if you don't want to invest in a pension plan as opposed to paying 4,000 and then you may be taxed because again, I suppose that with inflation, the threshold will also be increasing with inflation. Right. The inflate the threshold not I don't believe that it would remain at 1.5 for the next 35 years. So the expectation is that it would also go up with inflation. Yes, it may not be a reasonable amount because for some persons the 1.5 is small, but at that point, whatever it is should be in line with that inflation as well, I believe. So again i think it's the compounding on a larger lump sum now for the long term as opposed to 
um, a smaller amount invested now. So yeah, yeah, well, that, that clears that up because I, I I never I never really that that I never really fully understood that indeed I didn't see the benefit but for sure and also mm -hmm. the benefit as well for for everybody that was there that if you actually do have an employer that is going to match your contribution. Whereas mm -hmm. can you get a guaranteed technically 100% because if they're matching what you are, if it's 5% they're matching yeah. the amount you're putting there, that's an immediate 100% back on the money you're already putting in. So, um, yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember my previous employer used to stress it to many persons and persons still wouldn't take the benefit. I'm like, why not? It's it's free money, <laughs> essentially. Like, you're already working, might as well let them pay you the extra 5%. That's essentially what it's, that's how I consider it. Sure. You know? I, hope I'm not, I hope I'm not too late to go change. I'm going to I'm gonna check about changing, <laughs> changing that by tomorrow. That's for, that's for sure. Yeah. So, our next question we have from Richardo is asking, what is the best retirement vehicle, if you can state? All know? right. I, I, I wouldn't be able to state any specific company. <laughs> but I, of course, you know, there's the, the disclaimer. Past performance does not determine future performance. But you can use past performance to give you an idea. For the most part, the if it's if it's a if it's one provided by your employer, you really don't have a choice, essentially. But if it's under a approved retirement scheme, you can see how they have performed. They typically have different, they're typically unitized, and so they have different types of funds. So you may have a fixed income fund, you may have an equity fund, you may have a balance fund, you may have a foreign currency fund. Those are typically the four. You may have some others, but those are typically the four main types of funds for the approved schemes. Now you can decide which percentage or allocation you want to invest in. So you have $5,000, or let me keep it simple again, you have $4,000, and it has four funds. You can choose to put $1,000 in each fund. You can choose that or you can say, oh, no, I'm aggressive and put in the full 100 percent in equity. Now, yes, while the economy is good and, and the stock market is booming, that may be good for you. But what if at the time you choose to retire, the equity is down like last year? Suppose it's, it's a pandemic here and your unit price has gone down. So it, it's always good to have a balance. And again, this is essentially the investment managers and the experts saving you from yourself they don't recommend that you put a hundred percent in any one thing it may seem slow and teething that, oh no it's just one percent or two percent or oh no it's just five percent i could be earning 40 percent over here but at the end of the day it's happening over time it's not like you are investing for one year or two year retirement is intended to be long term so the expectation is no matter how low it is it will add up over time so it's good to have that balance even if while you're you're starting now, say like at the age I use at thirty, you may start at you know fifty percent in the in the equity one, the aggressive one. As you get older, you could change that. So you can always also change the allocation for the retirement schemes. Right. So I think I think this is the right time to give a plug, <laughs> give that give that customary um, due diligence plug that we do. We are not yes. financial advisors, <laughs> and for a question like that, for sure. You definitely yes. want to speak with your licensed financial advisor. Yes, yes, sure. yes, 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 yeah. yes. So, um, well, I don't think we have any more questions at this point, but it was absolutely, um, yeah, mind boggling and improving in, in for me personally, definitely <laughs> eye opening. And I'm sure, I mean, that, that I've seen, seen there. I'm looking to see if we have any more any more questions, but I think everybody has 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 had their questions answered completely. Roxanne, thank you so much for no for the input and and the education tonight in in what we've got. Um, I would say as well too, in in terms of in terms of additional questions, would another good resource as well? Actually, I should say this job should be a good resource to go to the the pension industry of Jamaica. Is that, do I have that correct? Are we correct? The pension, pension, P I P I O. I I, I, I know, I know your first is just not coming to me right now. Right, it's the, I'm it's not the remembering it though. Yeah, it's the pension pension industry association of Jamaica. Yeah, P I also, I believe P 
P-I-A-G. Right. I don't remember right. what it means, P-I-A-G. Right. Yes, they'll be give, able to give. Yeah, and the FSC's website also has statistics. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's very helpful, but it just, uh, it still gives an idea of what is happening with, with the pensions industry in general. Um, the latest one that they had up, that shows how under <laughs> um, invested we are in terms of pensions. Um, at the last, I think the last one, the most recent I saw was September. The employment, which of course, you know, may be lower now, but at the time it was say 1.1 million and only 11% are part of a pension plan. So oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure some of us know that ad that I think it's TVG, whichever on the station would show where the, the old man on the road and you know basically have to be working or or not really have anything because it we did not invest for expansion and they're encouraging you. And I think that's why they have that that benefit of being able to contribute before tax. Because they know that if you take home that money, chances are you're not going, you're not going to pay it yourself. So they're actually they trying do? to look out. They're trying to look out for you. They're trying to ensure that for one, you can have some sort of control. And two, you don't have to be a burden on somebody else when you get to that age. So I think it's something that we definitely should be maximizing on. And as I said, as early as possible. I think of it as if the government imposes a new tax tomorrow, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. <laughs> if you them increase GCT, you don't have a choice. Have a choice. So why not make this your choice to invest before taxes? That's how I see it. <laughs> that is you taking some sort of control for yourself. Okay. We have one last question here um, from Xavier. I guess I'll take this one. But again, as we say, we are not financial analysts, uh, financial advisors, sorry. So you should really speak to your, your licensed financial advisor. But he was asking, yeah. How do we feel about investing for retirement in something like the S&P versus a local Jamaican index? So Xavier, I would have to say on that one, there, well, we don't technically have indexes as yet um, in, in that way that we can invest in in Jamaica. We do have the index that is seen, the main market index, etc. But you can't actually buy into that as you can in the United States, etc., in the S&P, in the, in the NASDAQ. Um, etc again after speaking with your licensed financial advisor this is about your risk profile and also it is about protection of 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 the principle at the end of the day so mm -hmm. are you really looking to get into something it's not uh, indexes they've said that indexes in in this in the united states especially the s p 500 you can't beat the index over time but at the point in time when you're looking to invest and you're at retirement, um, you might be taking a risk. It might be that there in a bear market in, in, in the particular area that you're planning to invest in and it goes down. So the first thing that you should be looking for above all, especially when you are coming close to or at pension age is protection of principle is key. So, you know, you need to, you need to, once you're going to make that, make that move where you're now about to receive the pension, definitely, definitely speak to your licensed financial advisor to know what would be the best vehicle that you can now continue to grow the money that you're going to get while being able to live as well and gain income um, without losing that principle. That's the main thing that, that, I, that I would comment on for that. Yeah. So and I mean, I would also s just add that, I mean, not to say that you can't or you shouldn't, but that can be your supplement to your retirement, <laughs> yeah. to, a, a, to a pension plan. Yeah. yeah so what Jermaine just added, it can, yeah, it helps you diversify. So I wouldn't say no, you shouldn't or, you know, but it can supplement. At the end of the day, I, as I said, the focus of this was private pensions in Jamaica. So it's more about the benefit provided through the pension plan. You always recommend, it's always recommended that you supplement. So it's not to say you're only just rep um, relying on your pension plan either, because that is also just putting your egg in one basket. <laughs> just the same if you're only relying on the pension plan and nothing else. But it's if you do have the, the, the opportunity through your employer to maximize that and then 
even if you don't have a three employer to take advantage of the tax benefit in that regard. So yeah, it's really that's really what it's about. Okay, we've got we've got some late questions. Um, okay, David is asking pensions for teachers. How can it be best gained at pension age? No, sure I, I believe that. yeah, so I believe if, if it's if it's a public school as opposed to a private school. So mm -hmm. there would be a factor with that. I'm I'm not I'm not so familiar with the public ones. Um, but if you it's a private school, you know, a prep school or or whatever the case is, they may have a pension plan. If they don't, you can it can be something that you raise up in a staff meeting for them to get one because it's as a I mean a school would have at least 20 teachers. So you know they can have their own plan and create their own plan with their own rules and so on. So also if you are at a company that has a lot of persons and you know, say five or ten persons out of the of you want to contribute to a plan you can do it together you can actually join a retirement scheme they, they do have certain benefits if you come together as a company some of them do at least or you can opt to have your own pension plan create your own plan for your for your institution that what that process will definitely be a lot longer but it is something that you can start the discussions with especially if you're young i do i don't know your age now david but if you're a young teacher you know, it can be something that you start, you discuss with the school to implement and maybe five years from now, or maybe, hopefully not so long, but you know, it's something that can be in place for you should you remain there for a long time. I have a question on that same following on from David's question. A lot of the doctors, medical doctors, um, at least I don't know if it's a lot, but I know the medical doctors, they don't, some, they don't get a pension. They don't. What no. is your recommendation for, for those in the medical profession that don't get a pension? What what always are advise? always an approved retirement scheme. <laughs> so they can do it on their own. And you know, it's the thing about it is these these medical professionals, yeah, they make the big bucks now, but they're usually the ones that don't necessarily plan for mm -hmm. for the for the old age. So yeah, it's it's I mean if it's not provided through your employer, it's always best to choose a, an approved retirement scheme. And and, and at that point it provides some flexibility because you can choose which plan you want to be a part of. So you can you can say you want to join one at this in, at institution A and maybe a year or two you don't like how it, it it's operating for whatever reason. You can always switch to plan B and then roll in that plan because again, you have that flexibility with the approved retirement scheme. You can join another one, you just terminate your membership over plan A and join plan B. And again, you can transfer the benefit from plan A to plan B. It's just, you have to factor in all the conditions and the effect of, of doing all of that. So it's just to make yeah. an informed decision in that regard. Right, 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 yeah. all right. Yeah, that's that's for sure because I, I know they've i know i've i've heard i've heard the, the the questions about about that um that they don't and that is that's actually very true they don't normally plan for their yeah, doctors years. and lawyers don't typically notorious <laughs> notorious for yeah. having bad retirement planning but yeah well um i don't see as we go as we get close i don't see any more questions so Again, um, Roxanne, thank you again for, for, the, for the knowledge imparted. Great, great information shared. And everyone out there, for those who might miss it, um, please, you can, you can review it again. It's going to be here for you, for you all to review and see the various options that were presented. A, a, a host of information was given by Roxanne tonight. Um, and of course, as we always again we ask just like and share this video so that it may reach others so it can benefit them as well too please do mm -hmm. follow roxanne's roxanne's blog at at myaccountabledollar.com and you can also find her again on social media on instagram and on twitter and you can also find us learn grow and invest on instagram twitter and we're also on facebook so again everyone Thank you very much for tuning in. Wonderful discussion. And please stay tuned. We will be coming back with another meeting of knowledge again for your benefit. Yes. So, all right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. Good night, everyone. All right.